How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Mother Sponge 1000 and in this video we're going to focus on Invest 91L which likely will become Tropical Storm Julia and potentially Hurricane Julia in the more long term future and will determine if this has a possibility of making landfall somewhere along the Central American coast as a major hurricane but before i begin make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather they call so let's begin by taking a look at the water vapor imagery for invest 91l at this time and as you can see we do have a high level of convection going on surrounding this disturbance and it isn't much different than it was yesterday where we have been seeing an enhanced amount of convection surrounding this tropical disturbance for the most part however the big difference is that now it's having a little bit more land interaction which will in inhibit it from gradually intensifying or rapidly intensifying over the next several days however it's still likely that within the next 24 to 48 hours we will see this develop into tropical depression or tropical storm once we see a little bit more convection occur right over the warm waters of the caribbean where the air pressure will lower along the surface and of course the rotation the convection and convergence along the surface will increase for a uh, close center circulation to develop for tropical storm julia to form somewhere in the caribbean but um over the next between the next 24 to 48 hours but potentially even beyond that if the land interaction um shows that it's a little bit too much for this tropical disturbance to deal with which is still certainly a possibility because of course when we're seeing this much convection move over land that increases the friction which does limit the wind speed a bit for the for the um convergence to be strong enough for um for us to see a closed center circulation but it seems likely more likely than not we will see a tropical storm develop out of this and we do see that there isn't a lot of wind shear or dry air ahead of it as it's going to have pretty favorable conditions outside of the land interaction so it is expected to gradually intensify potentially into a hurricane as this heads into the western caribbean now take a look at the wind shear map we do see that this upper level low is still imposing a little bit of wind shear on the northern side of this tropical disturbance however it isn't this um the stronger upper level winds aren't really being imposed over the core of this storm where all the convection is occurring so this wind shear just to the north of it isn't really playing much of a role when it comes to this organizing this storm which is certainly not good news because that will of course allow the core of this storm to organize a lot faster or then it would it than it would have if the wind shear was over it so that's suddenly not good that's very that's definitely very concerning and that will allow the storm to develop into tropical storm within the very near future now take a look at what the computer models are stating as of today so there has been a big shift with what the gfs model has um is forecasting when it comes to trajectory because of course in yesterday's run the gfs model was leading towards bringing this storm a, a lot further northward closer to the yucatan peninsula and closer to the coast of belize and it was also a much stronger storm as it moved um, further northward however the gfs model is now taking a scenario where this storm is going to move um further southward sort of like what the european model has been stating and it makes and the gfs model is still forecasting a pretty powerful hurricane to make landfall somewhere along the central american coast or we see the pressure drop down to the 970s which is equivalent to a category 2 hurricane and borderline a category 3 which is definitely very concerning if you live ar around honduras or nicaragua and suddenly something you need to be on high alert as this disturbance continues to move further westward so i'll say at this point a tropical storm is very likely at this point and the possibility of this developing into a hurricane is certainly increasing based on what the latest computer models runs are saying with the gfs model wanting to develop not only a hurricane but potentially close to a major hurricane before landfall and if i were to show you guys the european model the european model also has been a little bit more lenient on bringing a stronger storm along the coast where we see the pressure drop down to 991 millibars just before landfall which is still on the low end i'd say of a category one hurricane but 
it's certainly stronger than the previous runs where the European model was forecasting a fairly weak tropical storm at most to make landfall um, right in between Honduras and Nicaragua. So there has been a shift when it comes to the trajectory of the GFS model where it's taking the storm for a southward. And at this point, it's the most likely scenario it will make landfall for a southward. There could still maybe be a slight turn to the north where potentially this could make landfall in Belize, but I don't think we're gonna see any sort of major shift in the forecast where it goes well for northward to where it impacts Cancun or maybe even directly impacts Jamaica at this time. It seems more likely it's gonna take a southern track to where it'll directly impact Nicaragua and potentially Honduras, depending on um, how far this storm um, ship um, shifts um, further north or southward. So we're gonna need to pay close attention to that. But in terms of the strength forecast, what really will determine how fast this strengthens is really how fast it's able to organize itself while it's hugging the Venezuela coast. Because of course, the land interaction is gonna be something it's gonna have to contend with as it heads further westward. And if the center circulation is a little bit too close to land to where at points it will make landfall at Venezuela or Colombia, then of course that would definitely inhibit its development as it heads further westward because there's uh, um because then the storm would have to deal with a higher amount of friction associated with the higher elevations of venezuela and colombia which would weaken the winds around center circulation and that would weaken the convergence that is needed for tropical cyclones to continue to develop and maintain their strength so depending on where the center circulation develops and how fast it develops will determine how um, fast this storm will strengthen as it heads for westward and will determine um, if we'll see a category two category one or maybe just a tropical storm at landfall and another thing too is that it also depends on the speed of this storm because while both the European and the GFS model do expect this to move at an average pace as this heads for a westward. The key difference is that the both computer models expect this to slow down as it heads closer to land. However, there is a key difference between the two computer models on how slow it moves because we see the European model wants to take a landfall at the 96 hour mark while the GFS model doesn't take a landfall till I'd say right around the 120 hour mark which is almost a day of which is almost a day of a gap between the two computer models when it comes to landfall which is huge because if the gfs mo uh, if the gfs's models scenario is correct then that would mean that um, this would have an extra day over the very warm Caribbean waters for this to strengthen um, just before landfall to where it'll be able to strengthen into a more powerful storm rather than if this were to move faster towards land and wouldn't have as much time to develop over the Caribbean, the very warm Caribbean waters. So the speed of the storms will play a big role in terms of strength they make landfall in and it really all depends on the steering currents if i were to show you guys the main steering currents are going to be associated with this storm we're going to have this big ridge that's going to be just to the north of this storm that's going to steer it to the west it was a little bit questionable whether or not this will move a little bit for a northward but it seems more likely it'll take a track for a southward and take a landfall somewhere between nicaragua and honduras and but if i were to show you guys the European model right around the um, same time period where it makes landfall right around the 96 hour mark we do see that the ridge is a little bit stronger with the European model which will play a big role in terms of speeding up this storm or we see the oranges extend a little bit further um, a little bit further westward than the um, GFS model where we do see a very strong well-defined ridge but if I were to compare that to the GFS model at the same time period, we see that the ridge isn't as strong, which will play a big role in terms of slowing down this storm. And we're just gonna need to wait and see how fast this will approach the Central America coast because that'll play a big role in terms of the strength. And in terms of track, really all depends on how 
powerful this ridge will be that will play a major role and if we were to take a look at the upper low winds over this storm we're going to see that the upper low winds will be very light which is very concerning because that will create very favorable conditions for this to intensify and another thing too is that the upper low winds will sort of steer this storm just a little bit further southward um to where it could slow this the gfs uh, um, models um, scenario down a little bit then compared to the European model where the European model at the 12Z run if I were to move forward we see that the European model isn't expecting as much of a northwesterly flow to steer this just to the south before it takes a turn north which is why the European model wants to move this a little faster and plus the upper level winds over this storm based on the European model's case is a little bit stronger which is steering the storm a little bit faster along coast so we're going to need to pay close attention to this upper level high and how powerful it is and its position to really determine how fast this will move towards the coast to really determine the strength of this. I'll keep you guys updated regarding that. But in terms of the track forecast, it seems like it'll make landfall somewhere between Nicaragua and Honduras. So you need to pay very close attention to this. And I'd say prepare now along the Central American coast if you're right along uh, um, potential tropical storm Julia's path. It's better to be safe than sorry and it's po very well possible you will experience hurricane conditions as this moves ashore along Central America and even if you aren't going to get directly impacted by tropical storm or hurricane julia you still could experience heavy rain associated with the outer bands of hurricane julia so it's uh so even areas further inland and and just outside of the storm's di direct path you still need to pay close attention to that possibility of flooding now Take a look at the chance at the National Hurricane Center is giving um, Invest 91L to form into tropical cyclone. We see that we do now have a high 70% chance this develops within the next 48 hours. So more likely than not, we will see tropical storm Julia within the next two days. And it's pretty much guaranteed we'll see tropical storm Julia within the next five days. And it's very well possible this will strengthen into a hurricane just before it makes landfall somewhere along Central America. Really depends on how much land interaction it'll deal with and how fast the storm moves towards the coast because if this moves slower it'll have a much longer chance to really organize itself and strengthen before it makes landfall which is certainly the worst case scenario now take a look at the model track guidance at this point we do see that there's pretty high certainty with the ensemble members take all pretty much all of them taking a landfall towards Nicaragua but of course the northern portion of most tropical cyclones in the Atlantic are the are the um, portions that have the largest wind field as well as the strongest wind so Honduras you still need to prepare for that possibility of hurricane conditions and even further inland into Guatemala Belize and portions of Mexico there could be a major flooding threat associated with Hurricane Julia as it moves up the Central American coast so you need to pay very close attention to this and stay on high alert all throughout Central America now I'm um, taking a look at the model intensity guidance when it comes to the strength forecast we do have quite a few of the model of the ensemble members taking a category one hurricane a lot of them um, may um, believe that this will stay uh, as a tropical storm however I'd say more likely than not we're going to see a hurricane out of this there is still that possibility this won't strengthen the hurricane status so based on how favorable the conditions are ahead of Invest 91L. It's certainly looking more likely at this point we will see a hurricane just before it makes landfall somewhere along Central America. Now, take a look at my forecast when it comes to potential Hurricane Julia. So I do expect this to develop into tropical storm by tomorrow where I do expect it to strengthen up to 45 miles per hour Thursday night. And then I expect this to gradually intensify and then rapidly intensify between Friday and Saturday once it's able to move again over the open Caribbean waters without being interfered by the Venezuela and Colombia. So we're going to see this storm be able to organize itself without any land interaction. And I do expect this to sort of rapidly intensify up to 85 miles per hour right around Saturday and potentially 
we could see a category two make landfall somewhere between Nicaragua and Honduras, which would bring major impacts. You need to prepare now along the Central America coast. And then, of course, I do expect the weaken as this moves over land. So make sure to stay prepared along the Central American coast. It seems pretty certain you will experience a tropical this is um, some sort of tropical cyclone as this moves westward and there is uh, an increasing possibility that we will see Hurricane Julia as it heads further westward. But yeah, guys, I guess that's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more about the content. I hope you guys all have a great day.